in an ACC edition of women's softball as the 16th ranked Virginia Tech Hokies play host to the 13th ranked Duke Blue Devils here in Blacksburg, Virginia. Hello and welcome to Tech Softball Park. Kyle Marshak alongside 21 graduate of a young Duke softball program, Rain Wilson. Rain, two really good programs with young rosters now. They both lost some good talent last year. Yeah, Virginia Tech losing Keeley Rochard, Duke losing Peyton St. George. Both of these teams are really young, but boy, are they playing well. They find themselves in the top 20 again. Yeah. Both, the, both of these teams are firing on all cylinders. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. For sure. Well, out with the old, in with the new. Emma Lemley has taken the spotlight in the circle for the Hokies. Yeah, Lemley has been fantastic, and she's only a sophomore, 186 Ks, leads Division One. She fills up the zone early, climbs the ladder late in the counts, and uses her rise ball really effectively. Well, she's going to have to face a really good Duke Blue Devils hitter and Anna Gold today. Yeah, Gold, 10 home runs on the year, third in the ACC. This kid can hit. She can hit really well for power, all sides of the field, covers the plate incredibly well, and it's going to be a really fun duel to watch Limley versus Gold all weekend long. A lot of velocity on both sides. Coach DeMore and Coach Young have both said that pregame that they've really had to teach their hitters how to hit against velocity. Lemley sits in the upper 60s, and you'll see in a second Cassidy Curd in the circle for the Blue Devils as well. Also chucking some really good velocity today. Should be a really fun pitcher's duel. Yeah, Lemley sits. When you develop a new program, and she's done a great job. I mean, all the way across the country, she's brought in talent. Next pitch is high. Yeah, Coach Young, a California native herself, but she recruits all over the country. Deja Davis from California, a lot of players from Florida, a few from Virginia a few seasons ago. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Lemley. Just misses low. Home plate umpire is Cameron Ellis today over at first base, Chuck McManus, and Heath Walker over at third base. Yeah, Davis, the grad student, having a really fantastic year when she stepped on campus as, a, as her team. And I remember us talking, she's going to be the first All-American in program history, and she's done just that. Here's the 2-1 pitch from Lemley. Swung on and fouled off to the left side. Off the screen. We might have a foul ball come right back at us today. And we're ready. We're super <laughs> ready. I'll let you take care of that one, Rain. You were a third baseman, you said, for the most part over at Duke. You're part of that first team in the Blue Devils history. Two two pitch from Lemley, swung on and fouled off to the right side. Long at bat to start things off. Davis really good when it comes to bat to ball skills. Three seventy eight average so far this season. Yeah, Davis covers the plate incredibly well. Will take her free passes. Fifteen walks on the year for the grad student. She's learned the zone really well throughout her career, and showing it off today. Working deep into the count with Lemley. Nothing like a. Good pitcher's battle here in the first at bat from Tech Softball Park. Swung on, grounded up the middle. Fagan behind it, it eats her up and rolls into right field. Base knock to start things off. Defense is going to have to be big for the Hokies today. Here's the defensive alignment for the Hokies. Ritter, Peck, and Green, the usual outfield. Tegan Thrunk and Cameron Fagan, the focal point of that defense in the middle. Of course, your battery, Aldridge and Lemley, and then Bennett over at third in the hot corner, and Jamie Bailey holding down first base. Here's Jennings. That one catches the outside corner. The scorebook, they're going to call that first one an error. Here's the 0-1 delivery, showing bunt. That one pushed foul. Well, it's been rainy this weekend pretty much the entire time, up until this morning. I thought you were going to bring the rain in, uh, Rain Wilson, but <laughs> luckily it has cleared up. Nice and sunny out. A little bit of a gust of wind out to left field, though. 64 degrees. That's the warmest it's been in a handful of days now, I'll admit. Here's the 0-2 to the freshman talent. Deanna Jennings for the Blue Devils. Swing and a miss, strike three. Strikeout number one of the day. Strikeout number 399 in the young career of Emma Lemley. Yeah, Lemley working the low rise here. Just look at the run on this pitch to the outer half. Jennings unable to get barrel that pitch. 
But that just speaks to the run that Limley causes on her pitches. Moves the ball incredibly well, attacks hitters. Three pitches, gets the first out for the Hokies. Here's Giselle Tapia, another left-handed bat. First pitch simmers in high. How about the velocity from both pitchers? Both coaches, Marissa Young, who's built this program from the ground up for the Duke Blue Devils, and Pete DeMore, the head coach for the Hokies, have talked about how difficult it is to hit against the velocity of these two pitchers. Swing and a miss. Yeah, Coach DeMore talking to us before the game about how he's put his players in really uncomfortable positions in practice to hit this velocity. How he's not going to make it easy every day, but it's going to pay dividends in the season. And I'm sure Coach Young on the other side of things has done the same thing. Really cool philosophies on both sides from coaches who have really built these programs from the ground up. There's a flared shot to left field that'll drop in. First base knock of the ball game goes to Giselle Tapia. Yeah, Tom, Tapia somehow gets her barrel up on this rise ball and shoots it in the left center. This does a really good job of fighting just over the head of the freshman Tegan Thrunk. And Duke's got something going early on in this game. And it's tough to tell what the ball game's gonna look like when you have two really good aces in the circle for these two squads. Sometimes with the velocity, it's almost like these lineups hit better. Here's Anna Gold. And really, Kyle, there's a point of emphasis when you're facing an ace. Both of these teams have probably really well prepared for Limley and Cassidy Curd on the other side of things. And so they come in with a plan. You can see Tapia there hitting that, that rise ball. So it makes for an interesting matchup. Young career for the right-handed bat of Anna Gold so far. She's already had her big moments. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Just outside. How about this? Last year as a freshman, she already shined in a big spot. She had a home run off the Pac-12 Player of the Year, Megan Faremo, in the NCAA Super Regional last year. Yeah, we're looking right now at the future of the ACC, Lemley versus Gold. 1-1. One, one. That one is hit real hard to the left side and foul. Watch out, Marissa Young. Just one down here early on a beautiful afternoon. Kind of unexpected. Yesterday, there was supposed to be the first matchup of this regular season series. But Marissa Young and her Blue Devils had to pack back up after a whole lot of rain yesterday afternoon. Two runners on early here in the top of the first. Here's the one, two. Simmers in high. Count goes even. Yeah, I think the matchup this entire game will be when Lindley makes mistakes over the middle of the plate, can Duke capitalize? And for Duke, are they going to chase that rise ball out of the zone? I think that's sort of going to be the, the storyline that we see this weekend. The 2-2. Two -two. That one goes full. And, and how about this storyline that I noticed as well from the coach's calls? Marissa Young said bringing Watkins in as you know an, an immediate staff member after her career at Duke she said she brought base running philosophy. You know Watkins well. What do you think she's telling these base runners when they step on the bags? Well, I think it depends a lot on the situation. Here, you're, you're trying not to get doubled up. Gold hits the ball hard. The last thing you want is a double play for this Virginia Tech team. 3-2, that one is popped high and deep to the left side and well out of play. Right to the grandstands that were newly installed here at Tech Softball Park. Beautiful afternoon for some softball here. 12 o'clock first pitch from Blacksburg, Virginia. Probably about 50% capacity. That'll fill in as the weather continues to shine down here on Tech Softball Park. The full count offering. Outside for ball four. Bases juiced. Lemley in a jam early. Lemley, an uncharacteristic base on balls for the Virginia Tech. But I think that just speaks to the batter you're facing, Gold. You're trying to work around her. There's always that player in the lineup that you circle and say, we don't want her to beat us. And I think Gold is that player for Duke. So although she gives up the walk, it's better than a three-run home run. And a whole lot of power to worry about in these lineups. Here's Amina Vega stepping up to the dish. 
four home runs on the season for this young bat. First pitch to her, swung on and hit well, center field. Going back near the track, the wall, a running grab, the runners will tag. That'll put in the first run of the ball game, a sack fly with two down here. Blue Devils on top. Yeah, Vega gonna take this pitch, and this is where the first time we've seen the wind really get involved in this game. Bree Pack goes back to the track. Vega gets the job done, scores a run. But if you're Virginia Tech, you're happy with the out. Yeah, Pete Demore, a guy who, who said he intentionally implements kind of a baseball mentality to this team. He'll take an out for a run any day of the week. Well, and especially how this offense is playing on Virginia Tech. I mean, they score eight, nine runs a game. Claire Davidson, another left-handed bat. First pitch to her, catches the outside corner. Corner's occupied, sack fly from Amina Vega. Brings in Deja Davis, who got on with an error in the very first at bat. So it's one nothing Blue Devils early. Here's the 0-1 pitch, fell back. It's early in mid-season play, but still a lot on the line, right? I mean, a handful of ranked teams in the ACC standings. And the storyline feels like every year is, is this the year where a team can dethrone the Seminoles? I mean, they've been reigning as ACC champs for so long. Duke, Clemson, Virginia Tech, they all have something to say about that. 0-2, this is outside. Yeah, in the past five years, we really have seen the ACC grow so much. Virginia Tech, Clemson, Duke. Coach Pete Demore, I don't know if he gets as much credit because Clemson and Duke are so young and so new, and they get the notoriety, but what he's done at Virginia Tech has been absolutely incredible. The one, two, swung on, popped up. Another souvenir for the fans. No catch on that one. Comes raining down. We're gonna hear a lot of ball on metal today. Both of these teams really swing the bat well. It's gonna be a fun one. Here's the one two with corners occupied. Grounded and foul to the right side. Watkins has to dance out of the way. Something early on for this Duke team that I think is a positive note for them is not a lot of swing and misses so far. Limley missing over the white just a little bit, but when you have run, you can miss over the white part of the plate. So something that Limley will go back into the dugout, maybe workshop a little bit with the coaching staff. How can we get those swing and misses? The one-two pitch. Ground to the right side, right to Bailey. She'll touch first, and that'll retire the final out. Blue Devils go on top, sack fly from Amina Vega. They're up one nothing. We'll be back from Tech Softball Park in Blacksburg. Home half of the first as the Blue Devils take on the Hokies here in Blacksburg, Virginia. And there's Cassidy Kerr taking the circle. This freshman sensation will be good, Rain. Yeah, 7-0 on the season, 1.45 ERA. But what I look at is 53 innings and 70 strikeouts. She'll look to minimize the walks here and there, but second in the ACC with 9.2 strikeouts per seven innings. This freshman has been dynamic for this new team. Yeah, they've given her a big workload, and she's handled it just fine as a young athlete in this roster. Speaking of rosters, a good lineup today for the Hokies. Throwing together the usual offense. Here's the leadoff hitter, Emma Ritter. One of the best bat-to-ball young girls, and not just the ACC, but the country. Raking 373 average so far. First pitch swinging. But it doesn't get easy for Cassidy Kerr when she faces this lineup. Jamie Bailey in the cleanup spot for good reason. She can rake and has a lot of pop off the bat as well. Yeah, Bailey's been a consistent bat in this lineup for a number of years. Eighth in the ACC with 34 hits. Hits to all fields really well, can put the ball out of the park. But you really don't have a break when you look at this Virginia Tech lineup. One through nine, they give you trouble. Yeah. One through nine with power numbers as well. Hard to find a zero in the home run column of this Virginia Tech lineup. They lead the country in home runs. Soft pop. That one's foul. We'll count that as a catch for the fan right behind home plate. 0-2, oh, quickly filling up the zone here is Cassidy Kerr. That's kind of her thing. She has really good command with her rise ball and fastball.
just outside for ball one. DeMore and Young both have really similar mentalities coming into this series, knowing the pitching they're going to face. They said plate discipline, plate discipline, and more discipline. Yeah, the best way to hit a rise ball pitcher is to lay off that rise ball. It's much harder, or much easier said than done, much harder to do. Here's the one, two. Fouled off again. Coach Young describes Cassidy Kurt as effectively wild. You don't really know where she's going to go at times, especially with the rise ball and the curveball into righties. I think that's what makes her so good. If she can limit the, the base on balls, if she can limit the hit by pitch, she'll be really good for her entire career at Duke. Yeah, she joked saying, hey, if a pitcher doesn't know where it's going, then neither does the batter, right? Here's the one-two pitch. That one, soft flare, right side, a running grab for out number one. Flashing the leather is Toppy over at first, and it's a good defense that's still coming along here for the Duke Blue Devils with a young roster. Usual outfield, Davidson, Jennings, and Freelick from left to right. Baker and Vega holding down that middle infield. That'll be important to watch today. And of course, Anna Gold holding down the hot corner over at third, and Tapia at first. Yeah, defense been a big part of this team. Second to last in the ACC in fielding percentage. But you gotta look around, see all the new faces. The best way to learn is to experience it. All right, Ritter flies out. Another left-handed bat. First pitch catches the zone. It's Cameron Fagan stepping up to the dish. Young Jr. out of Florida. Both teams have had their defensive woes. Fagan's been the focus of that for Virginia Tech. Kind of getting used to that middle infield spot. The 0-1 delivery from the left-handed pitcher. Smacked foul. Fagan, such a great swing, really patient at the plate, really good eye. She's one of those players that when she takes a pitch and it's called a strike, you almost wonder if it was the correct call. That's how good she is with plate discipline and understanding the zone. And it's so hard to pick out that zone against a left-handed pitcher, especially in softball. Here's the 0-2, foul back again. And you've faced a handful of left-handed pitchers in your career. Obviously, you were a good hitter, so maybe it wasn't that much of a struggle for you, but it is very weird seeing that arm slot from the left side. Yeah, lefty on lefty matchup. Just like in baseball, softball, it's very difficult as well, especially with Curd working the curve away or the fastball in. It's really challenging. As a righty, you have a little bit more of an advantage, but still, we don't see a lot of lefties in the college game. Here's the 0-2. Just low, according to home plate umpire Cameron Ellis. And especially lefties that throw really hard. Cassie Curd hit the 70 mile per hour club a few weeks ago. One ball, two strikes. That one popped up. When carrying it towards the track, Davidson will settle under it for out number two. Both teams putting balls in play. Yeah, not a lot of swing and misses early on. I think this will be a high offensive weekend, high offensive series for both of these teams. Here's Grace Chavez getting her fifth appearance as a designated player. They've had a whole rotation of young ladies off the bench going in and out of that DP spot for the Hokies. Two down quickly here. Curd in a rhythm looking to go one, two, three. Here's the first pitch, lefty on righty. Taken outside. Yeah, Shava has been so impressive in her senior campaign. Only 18 at bats, but three home runs. That's a home run every six at bats. Batting 444, kind of the easy selection for your DP right now. Covers the plate really well, has a lot of power. Really fun player to watch. Check swing. We'll say she went. Hard to lay off that high rise ball. The 1-1 one, one delivery. Swing and a miss. Almost like Chavez was sitting fastball there. Kind of got out in front on a 68 mile per hour pitch. Yeah, you'll see a lot of swing and misses early in the game for Cassidy Kerr because she's a freshman. These hitters haven't seen her before. 
So her run on her pitches is a little, not abnormal, but these hitters got to adjust to it. The one, two, misses outside. And the benefit that Virginia Tech has and on the Duke side is video. Now that all of these games are being broadcasted, thank you to ACC Network for that. But these teams have video on all these players and they've seen how offenses have capitalized on their pitches. So they come better prepared. Yeah. Coach Young said that about Claire Davidson, the junior. Her adjustment to the fact that people see her film. There's a soft flare to the right side and out of play. And, and that is an adjustment, right, if you're a pitcher. I mean, that's one of the most film-based positions in softball. And for Davidson, it, it was a real adjustment for her. Being a two-way girl for this roster as well, but Marissa Young has done a fantastic job in honing in the talent and setting expectations too. Two two. Swing and a miss, strike three. One, two, three go the Hokies. You got Torres, Baker, and Freelick coming up for Duke as they look to expand upon a one-nothing lead. Welcome back to Tech Softball hosting a fun one here as Marissa Young's Duke Blue Devils have a one-nothing lead. Marissa Young spent three years recruiting before starting this program from the ground up. She's done a solid job, Rain. Yeah, it's her first head coaching job. A lot of people forget that fact. Was an assistant at UNC, the arch nemesis of Duke. But now what a job she's done in just her short career as a head coach of this team. Two NCAA regional appearances, a super regional last year at UCLA. She's really built this program from the ground up. Yeah, spent three years before, after the announcement of trying to start this program, recruiting. And that's how most programs get things going, regardless of the sport. They have to spend a handful of years recruiting. Man, she did a great job. I mean, talent across the country in her fifth season of play for the Blue Devils. Here's Torres, first pitch swinging. Sky high to the right side. Aldridge, Bailey, and Bailey will make the play throughout number one. One pitch, one out. Well, Pete Demore is the leader of this Hokie squad. A little bit more experience in the head coaching role. He was at Kennesaw State a handful of years ago. Took over for the Hokies. He's in his fifth season as well. Two-time ACC Coach of the Year. Yeah, Coach Demore has just been fantastic for Virginia Tech. Softball and this entire community has really rallied around this softball team. Lemley, righty on righty, skips in a fastball. Another freshman in the lineup out of Florida this time, Jada Baker. It's hard to find a hole in either of these lineups. I mean, two of the strongest offenses in the ACC. Yeah, anytime your 8-9 hole is batting just shy of 300, you know you're doing something right on both sides. Virginia Tech really deep in their offensive lineup. Duke, same. The 1-1 one, one pitch from Lemley. That one hit well to left field towards the track, running over his Ritter. She'll make the running grab for out number two. Defense looking solid in the top of the second. Lemley so good at getting outs early. Yeah, Baker's just going to get under this pitch and lift it to left. Ritter does a great job, knows exactly where she is on the field, finds the fence, and makes the play. You know, Kyle, I think the wind is going to be a factor in some way, shape, or form today, especially with two rise ball pitchers. First pitch lined off the glove of the third baseman, Bennett, and it leaks into left field. Knock number two for the Duke Blue Devils as the nine-hole hitter, Freelick, gets aboard. Got a hold of that one. Yeah, Limley just missed that pitch. Middle, middle. Freelick makes her pay. Shoots one just out of the reach of Kelsey Bennett who's been a mainstay in this Virginia Tech defense for her entire career. That'll flip the order as we go to the top. It's Deja Davis again, the designated player. She got aboard with a hard ground ball to Fagan that ate her up. So an E4 in her first at bat. Runner on first, two down. First pitch swinging, little flare, left center field chasing over. Ooh, they collide in left center. Did she make the play? It looks like she got the grab and that should retire the side. Bree Peck running over for the snag. How about the athletic effort there in center field? Luckily, she gets up on her feet. Yeah, that one had to hurt for Bree Peck. Ritter, Peck going full speed. We'll take a peek at this one. Davis just lifts this one to center field. Peck 
makes the play, but looks like she just gets clipped by her teammate, Emma Ritter. Well, and outs and out. Hokies will take it, though. Two knocks on the board for Duke. They lead 1-0. Hokies back up. Hokies looking for their first knock today as the Blue Devils lead 1-0. We enter the home half of the second. Beautiful day for some ACC softball. Kyle Marshak alongside Rain Wilson for a fun matchup between two top dogs in the ACC. Right now, both pitchers have been shut down, but the Blue Devils, with just a couple of knocks, have been moving the base runners around today. Yeah, Duke making things happen early on. But if you're Virginia Tech, you have exactly who you want in the lineup. Jamie Bailey leading it off for the Hokies. No hits just yet for one of the best offenses in the ACC. Jamie Bailey with the most pop in a power-ridden lineup. First pitch simmers in low. 1-0 the count. Bailey a senior out of West Virginia and in her four years here at Virginia Tech has slowly but surely become one of the most prominent batters in the ACC. Eight home runs so far this year. one -oh just low as well. What do you think the mentality is? I mean, Curd can simmer rise balls high in the zone, but first two pitches here trying to catch the bottom corner. Yeah, she's working the fastball in the outer half. I think these Virginia Tech hitters are prepared for that rise ball. And so it's sort of that cat and mouse game for Duke. You're going to pitch call lower in the zone, attack early, then climb the ladder. 2-0 pitch. Swung on and fouled off again. I noticed it when looking back at film between Duke and Alabama earlier this season. Alabama hit well off of those low pitches as if they knew that Curd and the rotation of the Blue Devils were probably going to try and change eye levels more than usual. Because when you have velocity like Curd, the expectation is she's going to sit high in the zone, right? Yeah, but even her low fastball, just like Limley, has a lot of run to it, which makes it difficult to hit. But that's the pitch that you want to attack if you're the offense. The 2-1. Fouled off again. What makes it even more difficult is the fact that you not only do you have to pick down in the zone, but you have to sort of pick a side. You can't you can't sell out for the inside pitch or the outs, or you can't hit both, right? So you have to sell out sort of for the inside pitch or the outer half. Now when you get to two strikes, you, you change your approach, of course, to a two-strike approach. Now you cover all halves. 2-2 two -two to Bailey, only girl in the lineup who's started every game this season for Virginia Tech. High fly ball, right side, sun shining down, and out number one. Nice play by Vega to retire the first. Vega's been a focal point of that defense for the Blue Devils that Marissa Young's been very transparent about trying to improve in this young squad so far this year. Yeah, definitely not the start they wanted in the first half of this year, but they're aware of it. They're, they're looking to improve upon it. Lefty on lefty. Here's Addie Green for the Hokies. First at bat today for her. One oh the count. Addie Green, 1.126 OPS. One of several in the lineup for the Hokies, above a 300 batting average. Leads the team in homers with 10. Pete Demore has had quite the involvement in hitting philosophy for the Hokies so far. Next pitch catches the inside corner. Team that leads the NCAA in home runs. And DeMore's made a noticeable change in hitting approach this season. I mean, he said before, he's faced really good squads like UCLA, Alabama, where they can leave with double digits in knocks. And how many runs do they have to show for it, right? So he said, we needed to start making our swings count. And in that, his philosophy is, yeah, we'll sacrifice maybe a couple singles if it means we're getting a run on the board with one swing. Exactly right. And what's really interesting about this Virginia Tech offense is it's not like a do or die approach. They're not leading the conference in strikeouts. I believe, in fact, they're second to last in strikeouts. Yeah. So not only are they hitting for power to all parts of the field, but they're not striking out. So you have the best of both worlds with this Virginia Tech offense. Such an interesting approach mentally to the game that DeMore has brought. That one fouled off to the left side. As I said, a business approach is the way he looks at it. And, well, the business has worked because the home runs have rained down. As I said, first in the nation, they were just shy of two home runs per game a couple days ago. Rained down a handful more against Liberty. Look at that, 2.0 home runs per game. Yeah, what a job he's done. Leading the country, especially with teams like Oklahoma, 
Texas, Alabama, LSU, Tennessee. One-two pitch, fouled off again. But Kurt has avoided the power swings of the Hokies so far. Yeah, Kurt's done a really good job of attacking the zone, then climbing the ladder, working outside the zone when ahead and counts. Virginia Tech hasn't really barreled balls yet, but they're such a veteran offense. It's only a matter of time. Duke still leads 1-0. That one zips in high. Green jumps out of the way. So pretty cool. I mean, the power sacrifice is pretty much a movement in baseball and softball, both for the last handful of years, you could say. Two, two pitch. That one skips low. Count goes full. And with that philosophy, as I said, the Hokies have proven it. Coach Demore said, we as a staff decided that we needed to start making our swings count. Now he's produced the best power hitting lineup in the country. And it is amazing to think that there hasn't been much of a sacrifice for the Hokies because of that. Only second to last in the ACC, as you said, Rain, in strikeouts. That's pretty incredible. Full count pitch. Swung on and fouled off again. We're going to pitch number nine in this at-bat with Addie Green. And you can see with Addie Green, she's working the count incredibly well. She spoils pitches out of the zone that she doesn't want, waiting for the right pitch for her. Now we see Tora is going to conference with Cassidy Kurd likely discussing what do we want to throw. We've tried it all against Addie Green. She's the biggest home run threat for this Virginia Tech team, so we have to be careful with her. Yeah, what do you think the pitch sequencing is going to look like against a left-handed power hitter like Addie Green? Because a lot of pitches have been spoiled, as you said. She's been sitting low with the fastball, hasn't tried to sneak too many rise balls above the bat of Addie Green just yet. You think she's going to go off speed here? Cassie Kurd's still developing that off speed. I don't think she'll go that route just because Addie Green, it doesn't seem like she's caught up to the fastball. But as Kurd progresses in her career, she will need to add that off-speed pitch. Kurd, ninth pitch of the at-bat. That one simmers in high. Big walk worked by Addie Green. First runner aboard for the Hokies. And that's exactly what you want if you're Virginia Tech. If you're not barreling balls, if you're not quite on time with Cassie Kurd, you can still find a way by working counts, working deep in accounts, and that's exactly what Addie Green did there. All right, big opportunity for the Hokies to finally get on the board. First runner of the ball game. No hits just yet for Virginia Tech, though. You won't see that very often early in a ball game. Lefty on righty, it's Kelsey Bennett, the third baseman. Just outside. And what a career Kelsey Bennett has had at Virginia Tech. You know, batting 260 on the year, not her best, but the ceiling isn't, she hasn't met her ceiling yet. She can get hot at any moment. Next pitch fouled off again, out front on the off speed it looked like. Hey Kyle, you mentioned there's the off speed. And what that does, it, it gets in the head of hitters. You have to prepare for both, especially deep into counts. If Kurt can command that pitch more and more as her career progresses, she'll be, she'll be in really good shape. One ball, one strike, one down. Home half of the second. Blue Devils with two knocks on the board. They've driven in that one run. It was a sacrifice fly in the top of the first from Amina Vega. So the base running philosophy that Olivia Watkins has brought in has clearly worked as they've played small ball to get that one run across. 1-1. One, one. That one simmers in high. And these are the counts that Virginia Tech has to take advantage of. 2-1, and one, a plus count if you're a hitter. You have to pick a zone and attack it. Hokies are good on the base pads, though. Let's see what they can get out of this. One runner on, here's the 2-1 delivery from Kurd. Swing and a miss. Count goes even. 
Now the Hokies don't have a hit to show for it yet, but they're driving up the pitch count of Kurd. 35th of the evening in just two frames. Here it is. Check swing. Did she go? We're going to say safe, Chuck McManus says over at first base. And Kyle, I can't go understated how critical it is to bring her pitch count up, to work her pitch count up, especially in a three-game series. If Virginia Tech can't get the momentum off Kurd, at least they can get her out. If she's tired, bring someone new in. Full count pitch with a runner on. Popped up, soft flare, right side, and Kurd will make the play. The one runner will retreat. That's out number two. So the Hokies have spoiled a lot of good pitches from Kurd, but have yet to really square one up. So that'll bring up Bree Pack. First at bat of the day for Pack. Sophomore out of Pennsylvania has come along as well in this young roster for the Hokies. 313 batting average for the right hander. Two down, one runner on. Skips high, or skips low, excuse me. Bree Peck made that running grab in the outfield to close out this last half inning. That was a great play, collided knees with the left fielder Ritter, limped away, clearly. Wasn't too bad of an injury, popped right back up, here she is. Toughness, another quality that Demore has instilled in this team. That simmers in for a strike. Yeah, Pack another batter in this lineup with double-digit home runs. She's a power threat. Needs to cut down a little bit on the strikeouts, but that'll happen as she progresses into her career. 1-1 one, one with two down. Outside corner. What do you think the philosophy is there taking a pitch outside? I think Peck's likely looking in. I think she's looking for a fastball in. She could drive. Score run here, tied up. And so those last two working outside, she's taking them, but now she's got to fight all parts of the plate. One, two. We'll try again. Outside count goes even. Back pick. Did she get her? No. Real close play over at first. Vega couldn't dig it out. Or Tapia, excuse me. Closer than we originally thought up here in the booth. Torres firing it down to Tapia. Looks like they had a chance, but Tapia kind of tripped over the runner. And it looks like Cameron Ellis and Chuck McManus wanted to talk that over. Kind of an awkward play. Usually in a back pick, it's bang, bang. But the slide was almost adjudicated by the friction over there at first base. Yeah, it's almost like Tapia pulled her glove away from the tag as she sort of tripped over Addie Green. All right, 2-2. Two, two. Blue Devils looking to maintain a 1-0 lead. Fouled off again. Again, no hits to show for it just yet, but the Hokies will get that to pour in. And if you're just joining us, Kyle Marshak with Rain Wilson on a beautiful afternoon for a 12 o'clock first pitch between the Hokies and the Blue Devils. Kurt looking to shut down the second frame. That one hit well to the right side and foul again. Pitch count driving up and up for Kurt so far, who's maintaining a scoreless ball game. All across the country this year, we've seen pitchers work into the mid-100s. I believe Shanice Dells and Montana Fouts, Alabama versus Arkansas, they both threw about 150 pitches. You know, ne you never want that to be the case, but you understand that your pitcher wants the ball. Next pitch fouled off again. Back and forth we go. The Blue Devils have been persistent. I mean, the pitch count is driving up, but they are not afraid to push the workload of their young players. Marissa Young said that about Davidson, who's a two-way girl, and of course, the star in the circle right now for Cassidy Kurd. She said, all right, look, I'm transparent about the holes in our ability, 
and the biggest quote that I noticed is experience is the best teacher. I think that fits for a young pitcher like Kurt. Fell off again. You're exactly right. And, and Coach or Cassie Kurt has not been, you know, shy to these big moments. Pitched a really great game against Arkansas. Won a game against Florida State. And here facing Virginia Tech, it's really, really tough lineup. Coach Young is willing to put her in these situations. She applied that to the defense of her young roster too. Said we only have two starters in the field that are in the same spot they were last year. 2-2, two -two, another back pick attempt, not in time. What in that bat here by Bree Peck. Gets down early, looking in, takes away. We'll take a look at this back pick one more time. Green gets back in time, but Torres and Tapia, insistent. That's a good way to hold down the incredible base running abilities of the Hokies. Here's pitch number 10 of the at-bat. Popped up, this one might stay in the ballpark. Over is Tapia, she'll make the grab for out number three. A Little bit of a battle, no hits for the Hokies just yet as we head to the top of the third. Duke leads one nothing in Blacksburg. And Marissa Young has built this program from the ground up. It also just speaks to how important this series is for Duke to get back into those top three standings. First batter, it's the two-hole hitter, Deanna Jennings. First pitch, slapper, smokes one foul. A little bit of an overshift to the left side, as a matter of fact, for Deanna Jennings. Wonder if they have the spreadsheet on where she places the ball. You said she can hit to all fields. Well, clearly they think she can hit the other way here. Three infielders on the left side of the second base bag. That one misses outside. Look at that, Fagan pretty much taking over that shortstop spot and covering the 3-5 hole over to the left is Tegan Thrunk. Yeah, we see that lefty power hitter shift in baseball all the time, but now it's becoming common practice to shift for these slappers. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss, way out in front. That's just a really good pitch by Lindley. Understanding now for Jennings, that she's likely gonna get fed all outside because what she does with that pitch is hit it left side or up the middle. Lindley understands that, so she works up and in with a rise ball with a pitch that Jennings can't do anything with and gets a swing and miss. Here's the one, two from Lemley. Pulls back, that one simmers in high. So pretty interesting, I mean, that's the difference between lefty hitters in baseball, who are pretty much always pull heavy, right? And what slap hitters can do in softball. It's, it's so interesting to see that. And Jennings still brings a little bit of pop too, right? And that's the involvement of the necessity of power with about five extra base hits in the season as well. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Pulled back, called strike three, and that's K number 400 in Lebley's career. Yeah, Lindley just gonna fill up the zone with a fastball, looking to go away, but throws it middle, middle. But young pitchers out there, if you have good stuff, you can throw it middle, middle. Lindley with the first out of the inning and a big strikeout of Jennings. NCAA leader in strikeouts. Now 400 flat all time for the Blacksburg Ball Club. What a young career is brewing here in the New River Valley. Ready on lefty, it's Giselle Tapia now who singled her first time up. Yeah, Tapia, senior, covers the plate really well. Swing and a miss. Well behind that one at 68 miles per hour. Yeah, Lindley's starting to feel it. Starting to feel it, and you can feel it in the ballpark. As good as stuff as she has, she's also an elite competitor, and an elite leader on this team. Just as a sophomore, it's, it's pretty incredible. Young talents across both rosters. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Just misses inside. You can hear the dismay of the Hokie faithful here. And man, if there's any fan base that's gonna back up the young talent of Emma Lemley, it's Virginia Tax. And Pete Demore is there to support it too. He said she's matured more than anything. It's her team in terms of pitching. She just knows how to flip the switch. The maturity of Emma Lemley is what's impressed Coach Demore the most. There's a high pop-up to the left side. Wind carrying it towards the track. Running back is Ritter, who crashes into the walls for out number two. Yeah, what a great job again by Ritter, again by Limley, to fill up the zone. 
Next up. Kyle, I'm going to say it again. I think the wind at some point, whether it's for Virginia Tech or for Duke, is going to carry one of these balls out of here. Oh, it can take an effect. It certainly did against Chattanooga just a couple series ago for the Hokies. And then again against Liberty just a couple few, few days ago. Two down, righty on righty, and just drops in the off speed. Will get me over Flolly Floater for strike number one. Yeah, Gold gearing up for the fastball there. Doesn't even think about pulling the trigger, and I think that's the benefit of a first pitch changeup for Emma Limley. 0-1. Oh, fastball, line foul. Had that one timed up a little bit better. As hard as Anna Gold hits those balls to the left side in foul territory, Kyle, it's actually a really good thing if you're Virginia Tech. It's sort of a... Yes, that's exactly what we want. Get her to an 0-2 count. She can hit that ball foul as hard as she wants to. But now we have her in a hole. Now we can climb the ladder. They can even work the off-speed again off the plate in the dirt. A lot of options for Limley. Strikes a strike. First two up, first two down. Here's the next pitch. That one skips in low. One to the count. Coming up on pitch number 45 for Lemley here. As you said, both arms for this roster are pretty comfortable with taking in big workloads. Both have multiple outings over 100 pitches for their ball clubs, respectively. Here's the one two from the righty. Foul back. Yeah, Lemley's going to continue to carry a lot of the workload for this Virginia Tech team. Just similar to Keely Rochard a few years ago when Lemley was still in high school. The chance to learn from Keely Rochard, I'm sure, was a massive benefit for Emma Lemley and the rest of the pitching staff. One ball, two strikes. Two down here in the top of the third. Fouled off again, right over our heads. I was ready. They've got the latch open for the camera up above our heads. Imagine the ball ricochets in. Girl can only dream, <laughs> You played the hot corner. I'd imagine uh, you'll take that one for me. <laughs> I'll run away from it. Here's the one, two, and two down. Off speed again. I love the pitch call by Limley and by this, this coaching staff in the dugout. Working off speed off the plate, just a little bit too far out of the zone. Not as much of a purpose pitch there, but you could tell Gold was ready to, was geared up to swing at that pitch if it had been a little closer to the zone. Two all ACC freshman members squaring off. Here's the two, two to Gold. Fouled off again. And we've seen veteran at-bats on both sides. Addie Green, Bree Pack, working the count deep. Anna Gold, same thing here. Gets down early, eighth pitch of the at-bat. Spoils anything she doesn't like, but she will make you play if you miss over the middle. Pitch 49 for Lemley. Dangles the right arm. Talk about an intimidating presence in the circle. The 2-2. Two -two. Flared foul again. We're going to come up on pitch nine here. Lemley's oh. such a competitor. I mean, you can tell in every single pitch, every moment, she's locked in. How about the grunt on the rise ball, too, from Lemley? I'd be terrified if I'm on a gold. Clearly, gold not intimidated, though. Earned a walk her first time up. Off speed, fouled off again. That one dropped down to 48 miles per hour, a 20 mile per hour difference, maybe more, between her rise ball and her off speed. Yeah, it makes it really difficult on the two strike approach to be on time for the fastball, but also fight off that changeup. Gold doing a really good job fouling that ball straight back, tells you she's on time. Lemley looks into Aldridge. Here's the 2 2. How many foul balls are we going to get this at bat? We might need to go get more softballs, something. <laughs> 11th pitch of the at bat. And I know both of these sides don't look as at average as much. They look at quality at bats. This is a quality at bat. Now it's just who's going to win? Who's going to win this duel? That's a good point. Aldridge, a battery mate with Lemley, has a low batting average this season. But Demore said, I'm not concerned. Why? Because she has a high on base percentage. We'll talk more about that later. Here's the 2-2 popped out of the ballpark once more. We're coming up on pitch 13, if I'm not mistaken, in the set bat. 
I think it's about time for the fans to get on their feet. This is, <laughs> you can see some Hokies start, start clapping. This is really good softball right here, Kyle. 2-2 two -two with two down in the top of the third. The Hokies want to step back up to the dish. They're down one nothing to the Blue Devils. In game one of a three game series. Swing and a miss, strike three. Number 401 for the career. Number three today for Lemley. Blue Devils lead one nothing. Hokies will step back up to the dish on a beautiful day in Blacksburg. Watching, you're seeing a beautiful one between the Hokies and the Blue Devils on a beautiful afternoon at Tech Softball Park in Blacksburg, Virginia. As Cassidy Curd retakes the circle. The Let's Go Hokies chance rain down here at Tech Softball Park. And Kyle Marshak alongside Rain Wilson should be a fun matchup as it remains a pitcher's duel in the bottom of the third. The Blue Devils lead one nothing. Big hack and a miss for Tegan Thrunk who steps up to the dish for the first time today. Yeah, Thrunk, the freshman, the shortstop, has not skipped a beat coming from high school into the college game. Batting around 300, four home runs, 15 RBIs for the freshman, the eight hole. Just done a really good job for this Hokies team. Now this freshman infielder's been a focal point. Next pitch, chopper, left side, behind it, and the throw over to first is in time. Nice play by Gold for out number one. Two pitches, one out. Curd fought off a lot of foul balls in a couple innings ago, but luckily gets an efficient one for the first one here in the bottom of the third. That'll bring up the nine-hole hitter, Kylie Aldridge. I alluded to it in the previous half inning, but Pete Demore looks at the stat box and isn't really too concerned. 130 batting average for Aldridge, but how about the on-base percentage? Still getting on 36.9% of the time. That's not the worst in the lineup at all. And just like Coach Young said, experience is the best learner. I think the same thing can be said for this Virginia Tech team in Kylie Aldridge. On top of that, he said there's a lot of loud outs off the bat of Aldridge. That one simmers in high. Two balls, no strikes. One down here in the home half of the third. Just shy of halfway through a beautiful Saturday noon first pitch. Supposed to be game two of this three-game series between the Hokies and the Blue Devils, but the rain came in last night. So a doubleheader tomorrow. If you're a softball fan, spend six hours out here at Tech Softball Park tomorrow. Nothing like a doubleheader. Yeah, beautiful day for softball. Love to see the Blacksburg community come out and support this Virginia Tech team. Little girls in the stands watching their role models. Such a fun atmosphere. Well, the atmosphere is impeccable here. The 2-1 swims in high. Three balls, one strike with one down. Yeah, the Hokies are really good when it comes to surrounding themselves in their community. Durham hosts the same type of feel with Duke. It's a town or a city, if you will, that surrounds the university that lives within it. So the athletes always give back. Softball for Virginia Tech has hosted a couple of promotions. I know Duke is big on that over in Durham as well. 3-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Count goes full. Virginia Tech in the last two weeks has hosted Pediatric Cancer Support Day and also Military Appreciation Day on back-to-back -back evenings, as a matter of fact. Full count for Pete DeMore's young talent and the freshman backstop, Kylie Aldridge. Here's the pitch. Simmers in high. Big walk worked in by Aldridge, who walks a lot. Another base runner for the Hokies, representing that tying run with one down here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, what a job by Aldridge. I mean, you look at the numbers, they don't jump off the page at you. But just like you mentioned, Kyle, she finds her way on, and that's really all that matters. For young players out there, even if you're slumping or if you're not hitting as much as, as well as you'd like yourself to, you can still find a way to get on spoil pitches and pass the bat. Here's the best left fielder in the ACC as of last year, a member of the 2022 All-ACC first team. Off speed, speeds in. Just inside, 1-0 the count. Ritter 0 for 1 today, flew out her last time up. Not a lot of missed at bats for her though. NFCA third team All-American last year as well. 1-0 delivery, you sitting fastball on this one? Yeah, absolutely. One down, here's the pitch. Just outside. 
And now Ritter is even in an even better position. She can pit a, pick a part of the plate, pick a speed. Coach unlikely going to check in on her freshman. Coach Young in her fifth season, seeing a split of balls and strikes she's not very used to with this young freshman who's otherwise very disciplined and good with command. But the Hokies have fouled off a lot of really good pitches from the lefty. Yeah, it looks like the Hokies are sitting a pitch, whether it's an inner half fastball, outer half fastball. I think it depends on the batter. But deep into counts, when they get behind, their ability, like you said, Kyle, to, to, to spoil pitches and work the count and force Cassidy Kurt out of the zone and get the free pass. You can see there Coach Young likely giving Cassidy Kurt a physical cue. I talked to her a few weeks ago, Coach Young, and, and she mentioned that timing can be the biggest aspect of Kurt's success. And she actually wants her to throw at 80% of her speed, and that's when she has the most command. Yeah, well, plate discipline has definitely been a focal point of the success for a season that's been a little bit up and down for the 16th ranked Hokies. Right around first year is the 2-0 to Ritter. Saw Flair right side running in. Nice play by Tapia for out number two. Two fly outs to the right side for Ritter, who's struggling to time up. Stuff from Cassidy Curd, and that'll bring up the two-hole hitter, Cameron Fagan. Yeah, just what you want if you're Coach Marissa Young and Cassidy Curd to get that second out, to get Emma Ritter out. But now you have to face Cameron Fagan, which is no easy task. Five big flies for Fagan. First pitch to her, lefty on lefty. Speeds in high. Coming up on pitch 59 here after 2.2 innings of work for Cassidy Kurd. Virginia Tech, they take their signs for the battery from the dugout. This is the first year that Pete DeMore's done that. Blue Devils, they have a similar Ability to grab signs from the dugout too. Here's the 1-0 spoiled off. Or are they using Pitchcom this year? Not, no, not using Pitchcom just yet. I hopefully that will be introduced in the next few years. But get the sign from the dugout. The entire defense gets the number, knows exactly what pitch is thrown. Sometimes you will see Cassidy Kurt throw up a number and, and call a pitch herself. Where you run into trouble is if you shake a pitch off, you run into that time limit trouble could cause a ball on the batter, or a strike on the batter. I don't know, ball on the batter. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss. <laughs> it's either a strike or a ball. Yeah, it's one, one of those, those two. two. Yeah. Softball, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to trust your expertise, though, Rain Wilson. You're <laughs> first in Duke history to get all ACC honors. You weren't going to say it, so I'll brag for you. Pretty good analyst to pick up for a game like this. 1-2 pitch with a run around first. Chopped. That one's going to roll right out in front of the plate. Throw over to first is in time on a tapper to close out the inning. Hokies still looking for their first knock as the Blue Devils lead 1-0 for a fun one here at Tech Softball Park in Blacksburg. Lemley retakes the circle with a 1-0 deficit for the Hokies who host the Blue Devils and the pitch sequencing of this sophomore sensation is fun to watch. Yeah, how about this pie chart for Virginia Tech broadcasting and she's going to work her rise ball 36 percent of the time fastball 26 percent curveball less so much less as much as that screwball change up drop ball just speaks to the repertoire that emma lindley has but also the success of her rise ball opposing batting average of one point or point one two seven the fastball gets hit a little bit better and if you look down the change up gets hit the best out of all those pitches but she rarely throws it yeah, she throws it second the least but man, talk about a big repertoire of pitches. That can always help. You never know what you're getting from the right-handed sensation of Lemley. Fastball speeds in inside. Here's Amina Vega. Sack fly to bring in the only run of the ball game in her first at-bat. It was a deep fly at that. Top of the fourth, about halfway through this ball game. Next pitch swinging, that's a high fly ball towards the track, the wall going back. It is over the fence and out. Solo shot on another big fly. Both RBIs to the credit of Vega and the Blue Devils lead 2-0. Wow, the freshman versus the sophomore, Amina Vega coming up clutch there. Talked about the wind all day, Kyle. I think the wind helped this one, but the power of Amina Vega. Hammers this ball over the left center fence. 
and gives this Duke team a little bit more insurance against the sophomore Emma Limley. Right into the pines of center field with the backdrop of Lane Stadium. Beautiful home run. Next pitch swing. There's a bloop to the left side running in, and Ritter will make the catch for out number one. Damage already done, though. With only three hits on the ball game, the Blue Devils have made their swings count. It's a 2-0 lead for the visiting Duke ball club. Yeah, if Limley has had an Achilles heel, which I, I don't know if she has. She's just a sophomore. It's been giving up the long ball. <laughs> Next pitch, catches the outside corner. Pizza Moore is very transparent about the capabilities of his own team, especially coming into a challenge series like the Blue Devils. He believes in his squad, though. He said, we can compete with anybody. It just depends on what team we have on the field that day, meaning it's a young squad. So sometimes they're a little inconsistent, but at their best, they can compete with any ball club in the country, especially offensively. But he's also been very transparent about the loss of Keely Rochard last year and Mackenzie Lauder as well, a, a battery that pretty much ran their own show. He didn't call pitches for Keely Rochard last year. They, they did their own thing, and it worked, obviously. One, one pitch. Yeah, that just speaks to the chemistry that those two had. I can't understate how uncommon that is in a college softball game for the catcher to call pitches, especially because coaching staffs have so much information right at their hands. But it just speaks to Mackenzie Lauder, her knowledge of the game and the bond that she had with Keely Rochard. And that's why Lauder's come right back to Blacksburg to coach. Next pitch swinging. Ritter fighting the sun, and she'll leather it for out number two. So Lauder, a part of that battery that was oh so successful and independent for one of the best softball teams to come out of Blacksburg. There she is in the dugout alongside the coaching staff of the Hokies. Man. Yeah, yeah we, we talked to Coach Pete Moore. He said, talked about leadership. He said, it's really hard to replace Mac. It, it's almost hard. It, she is not replaceable. But you look at the likes of Jamie Bailey, look at Kelsey Bennett. They've done a good job. Even Emma Limley has stepped into that leadership role. But Mackenzie Lauder calling pitches at this level with an All-American in the circle it just speaks to what kind of tool they have now in the or in the dugout for this Virginia Tech team. And he's been straightforward about the fact that with a young battery, Aldridge, a freshman, the backstop for the Hokies, and obviously a sophomore pitcher in Lemley, he's excited to see what they look like next year if they're doing so well this year. Nothing lead for the Durham Ball Club. That one simmers in low. Two balls, one strike. Coming up on pitch 64 for Lemley. Both pitch counts being driven high by a lot of spoiled pitches from both lineups. To one pitch outside. And back to the point of what DeMore had to say about his really young team. The biggest quote that stood out to me in that conversation, he said, People need to realize that Lemley, a sophomore, and Brian, a freshman, are a young base for our rotation. So why hold them to that same standard? Now, of course they are in, in a former fashion, right? But that's going to take time because that one speeds in low for a walk. Yeah, what's well, something that stuck out to me? You mentioned the best is yet to come. They have not even come close to peak. And they're the 16th team ra ranked team in the country, 26 and 6, 8 and 1 in conference. So the fact that they have they still not reached their ceiling, I think he's spot on. I think this team has much, much farther to go. And they can get hot and really make a run late in this season. Jada Baker works the walk on seven pitches. Now it's Francesca Freelich who singled on one pitcher first time up. Catches the zone, 0-1. Freelich on the first pitch swinging. Maybe early aggression in the at-bats is a way to try and knock on one of the best pitchers in the ACC in ML Emily. One ball, one strike. No attempts at stealing a bag today with two backstops who have pretty good arms. We saw a couple of back pick attempts the previous half inning from the Duke's backstop in Torres. One, one delivery from Lemley. Just low. Yeah, Virginia Tech with an interesting defensive lineup. Fagan covering second 
which takes away her ability to cover first on the bunt. I don't think that Duke will go there with two outs, but Freelich always has the capability of putting the ball on the ground. A lot of speed in both lineups. Here's the 2-1, swung on in line hard, foul. Marissa Young had to dance out of the way of that one. We've seen a lot of hard hit foul balls over to the left side. I think if you're Duke, you really want to refocus to up the middle. Get your barrel out in front of you, square it up in front of you instead of turning around it. Coach Marissa Young, an athlete herself, having to avoid those foul balls. The 2-2. Foul tip. Just spoiled that one. Lemley starting to work the off speed a little bit more, keep these two hitters off balance. Freely does a really good job of delaying there and spoiling that pitch. Pitch 71 for Lemley, who just captured her 400th strikeout in her young career in Blacksburg. Here's the 2-2. Swung on and belted foul to the left side. Blue Devils continue to get out in front on some Lemley fastballs. Yeah, another deep at bat for both of these teams. Spoiling the pitches they don't like, getting the pitches they do, battling. Just really good softball. Any young players watching, this is just really good stuff. 2-2, Two -two, line to the right side. Fagan, forehand grab, throw over to first, in time to get her. Flash in the leather, but not without a difference being made. One big swing makes the difference as the Blue Devils lead 2-0. Amina Vega strokes one to center field. for the ACC conference. And yeah, the ACC, not the only conference with a whole lot of talent in action today. We'll get that out of town scoreboard later this ball game. First pitch flies in high from the big lefty Cassidy Curd as Grace Chavez steps up to the dish. Second at bat of the day, struck out her first time up. Chavez has been in and out of the lineup, kind of cementing her spot as the designated player in the three hole here for the Hokies. 1-0 pitch, misses outside. And kind of finding that consistency is what Pete DeMoor, the head coach of the Hokies, has harped on the most so far this season. I mentioned it last half inning, but like Marissa Young said, he believes experience is the biggest factor. And with a young team, he can't expect them to be oh so consistent all the time. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Simmers in high. He said, look, with a young team, sometimes it goes off the rails. You just don't know what roster we're going to harbor in. And though Chavez has become consistent, plenty of girls off the bench have gotten their role as a designated player this season as well. Yeah, what a luxury for Pete DeMore and this offense to have so many players work into that DP role. It gives you the benefit of picking a player based on a matchup, too. A lefty on righty here with Chavez. But Meredith Slaw, not, uh, numbers are a little down this year, but it's been really, really good her whole career. Morgan Overitis, among others. Just getting them looks each and every day, and I'm sure we'll see a different DP tomorrow or even game three. 3-1. Three, Just catches the bottom corner. Chavez is ready to take the 60-foot trek over to first. Yeah, Curd's going to work out outer half. Looks like it's in the river. I think I might agree with Chavez there. But the arm side run for Cassie Kurt so, so dangerous. Full count pitch. Lefty on righty. Soft flare right side. And Tapia will glove it for out number one. Great battle for Kurt to come back and get that first out. Yeah, what a job by the freshman. Unfazed, deep into counts. I think that's where I've seen her grow the most in her young career is being really comfortable deep into counts, still spotting pitches, still commanding the zone. And does it there to get Grace Chavez out. Get that first out of the inning, which is so huge in this game. Here's the power bat of Jamie Bailey with one down in the home half of the fourth. Two ranked squads and neighbors in the ACC standings. First pitch swinging, line drive, left field, no doubt about it. Jamie Bailey puts one on the board. The Hokies are down one. The senior, the leader on this team, Jamie Bailey. Looking in and getting the pitch she wants and taking it 
far over the left field fence. Jamie Bailey balanced swing through that pitch and gets Tech right back into this game. What a job by the senior. Jamie Bailey's become a mainstay in the lineup for a reason, and she's been a part of the involvement of hitting philosophy in Blacksburg. I mentioned it before, but hey, when you're a ball club that leads the country in home runs and home runs per game at exactly two in outing, clearly head coach Pete Demore has changed the philosophy of hitting approach for a team that already hits well with average. Now they hit well for power. Jamie Bailey, that's her eighth big fly of the season. Bailey, Bennett, and Lemley were the three that Head coach Pete Demore said before this game were the leaders he was excited to see on the field and how they reacted in a series with one of the best squads in the ACC. Clearly, Bailey has used that leadership to her advantage as she's the first one to get across, not just a knock, but a rung for the Hokies here. Now it's Addie Green who walked her first time up. Yeah, really impressed with the swing by Jamie Bailey, but also the aggressiveness early in the counts. Up to this point, this offense has been really quiet, but that's why hitting home runs is a really, really powerful tool for this offense. 1-1, one, one, there's a line drive right center, and in the gap, it's a running grab for Freelick for out number two. Really good swing there by Addie Green. Although the wind might have helped Bailey's ball go out, I think it would have gone out regardless. That ball kind of was deadened by the wind. I think if Addie Green, if it, on a windless day, that's a double off the right center field wall. That looked like it just stayed up in the air on that one. Virginia Tech starting to get the wheels turning against Cassidy Curd. When it rains, it pours, it feels like, with this Hokies lineup. Once they figure her out, the power numbers Pour right in, first pitch, strike one in the inside corner to another power bat in the form of Kelsey Bennett. She has five in the season so far. Simmers outside, ball one. And what a great opportunity for the freshman Cassidy Kerr to respond to the adversity, to punch back. A growing moment for number 19. So just a moment ago, that was home run number 64. They're on track to destroy the single season record. They previously had at 97 Virginia Tech over one season. And the funny thing is, Coach Demore is so nonchalant about the power he's harbored in this team. Pre-game he said, I knew he had power. I didn't know he had this much. 63 homers coming into this game is a lot. That one skips away. I think that's kind of humorous in a way. Head coach Pete Demore works so hard with his staff to harbor this power in the lineup that doesn't realize just how much power he's created. It's hard to fathom though. Yeah, so much respect for Coach Demore and what he's done at Virginia Tech. So poised, so businesslike, but also enjoys the game, enjoys coaching these young women. 3-1, soft flare, center field. Coming in is Jennings, and she'll make the running grab for out number three. One swing makes a difference this time for the Hokies. They're down 2-1 as Jamie Bailey strokes one to center field. Yeah, Jamie Bailey crushes one over to left. Virginia Tech and Duke in a fun one. 2-1 one your score as the Blue Devils lead the way here in Blacksburg. And man, the Blue Devils, they play in a tough conference, but they've given themselves no break in the non-conference schedule as well. How about their play against ranked opponents, Rain? Yeah, they've been battle tested early and often, but that, those first few games, Washington, Oklahoma, to open up the year, I think really set the tone for the rest of the season. You know, although they lose to Washington, they lose to Oklahoma, they get some momentum. They beat Stanford, they lose to Alabama, but then they beat Arkansas. It's been, not been an easy track for this Duke team, this young Duke team, but I think they've come out the other side really, really well. I'd be very pleased with my performance if I'm head coach Marissa Young, who's built this program from the ground up as Deja Davis takes ball one in the outside corner. 
You know, Duke lost a lot of key players last year. And so I think for softball fans all across the country, looking at their schedule before the season, they thought maybe if they win three or four, that's, they're in good shape. But then that, that graphic alone, you see how many games they've been competitive against the best competition. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Davis. Pops one foul. Coming up on pitch 75 for Lemley. Sitting around the same area is Curd on the other side for the Hokies. But man, pitching is the focus when it comes to talent lost. St. George gone from Duke and a whole battery of experience for the Hokies on the other side with Rochard and Lauder leaving the Blacksburg area as well. 1-1 one, one pitch. Speeds in high. Two balls, one strike. Yeah, for Duke and Virginia Tech, they lose a lot of pieces, but across the ACC, you know, Florida State loses Cindy Sherrill, but they're right back with a really solid program again. Clemson, of course, adds a, new, so a couple new faces that have been really good. Off speed. Three balls, one strike. Davis getting out ahead on this one. And if you're Limley here, you just really got to attack the zone. Obvi like obviously, you want to throw strikes. But Davis is not someone you, you want to give a free base to. 3-1 pitch. Check swing, fouled off again. And so with a good offense, I mean, that takes the stress off of these pitchers, right? But with two young arms in the circle, a freshman in Cassidy Kerr, the left-handed pitcher for the Blue Devils, and of course the righty we're watching right now in Lemley, who's a sophomore for Virginia Tech, it brings that kind of standard of whether or not they will fit into certain parts of the rotation. Lemley's been the clear-cut ace. Duke, they have a handful of arms they can go to on any Saturday. So there's a bloop to the left side, and that'll be gloved for out number one as Bennett settles under it. Yeah, what a pitch by Lemley to handcuff Deju Davis, get the first out of the inning. It looks like we'll see a pinch hitter for Duke. I'm gonna bring up a right-handed bat, try and switch things up as the Blue Devils give up their first run in the previous inning. It's gonna be Sarah Goddard stepping up to the dish. First substitution of the ball game. So Jennings steps out. Jennings, kind of an uncharacteristic day for her as she gets replaced in the lineup right now. She had two Ks up until this point, so now they go to Goddard. First pitch outside corner, strike one. Yeah, the natural run up of Limley kind of works against what Jennings is trying to do. Has had some difficulty getting her barrel on top of the ball, so you throw a right-handed hitter and and Sarah Goddard in the box. Righty on righty, here's the 0-1. Right down the middle for strike two. Goddard hesitant against the velocity early on here in the top of the fifth. Really difficult spot for a pinch hitter because Limley, although we're seeing it on television, it looks like right, like it's right there. Has a ton of movement, a lot of spin. The 0-2 just misses outside. Marissa Young and Demore both said verbatim, we need to take more hacks in the zone. Yeah, I think it comes down to conversing with your teammates in the dugout. What does it look like? Because it can look like something on TV, it can look like something from the dugout, but in the batter's box, it's a completely different feel. One, two pitch, swing and a miss. Another K on the board for Emma Lemley. That's her fourth of the evening to retire out number two here in the fifth. I mean, the movement on this fastball is unbelievable, works up and in. And Goddard just can't catch up, can't get her barrel out in front of her. Limley with the strikeout and the second out of the inning. She just has such good stuff, Kyle. Two up, two down quickly here as Lemley's finding a rhythm. Hokies down, one run. As the Blue Devils look to expand upon it, Giselle Tapia, big fly, left side, flaring towards the wall. Ritter makes the grab nonchalantly to retire the side. One, two, three, go the Blue Devils. As the Hokies step back up to the dish, they're working with a one-run deficit in the bottom of the fifth. Welcome back on the ACC Network. Kyle Marshak alongside Rain Wilson. We talked about the storyline. Both teams have lost some big name pitchers in the last couple of years, but there's a shot of Keely Rochard, who's here to support her Virginia Tech ball club. She hasn't left Blacksburg just yet. And we have a fun one as the Blue Devils lead two to one. The Hokies step back up to the dish here in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, the legend Keely Rochard back in town. I think, what's the saying here? This is home? Yeah. This is home for Keely Rochard. What a job she did in her career for this Virginia Tech softball team. And that's pretty much the theme all throughout the ACC. 
Softball is as fun as ever, and most of all, as excellent as ever. In the Atlantic Coast Conference, lefty on righty, first pitch, simmers in wide. As we have Brie Peck stepping up to the dish to lead things off. Three more tries for the Hokies to try and tie things up in a pitcher's duel here in Blacksburg. And how about the excellence of the ACC, which has risen to prom or prominence here. The 1-0 pitch, simmers in low. Yeah, really spearheaded by Coach Lonnie Alameda in Florida State. But with the addition of Pete DeMore to the head coaching job of Virginia Tech a few years ago, with the addition of Clemson, with the addition of Duke, it's really risen this conference up to one of the best in the country. Yeah, Rittman's Clemson Bulldogs have become one of the top dogs, or Clemson Tigers, excuse me, have become one of the top dogs in the conference. And that's the theme this year. Is this the year where Florida State is dethroned as that dynastic reign of the ACC? Yeah, Duke with the 2021 ACC Championship. Virginia Tech, the 2022 ACC Champions, the regular season. 3-0 pitch, and it's a four-ball walk for Bree Peck. You know, Seminoles fans listening might disagree with us, but I think it might be that time where it, if, if, if they're not on top of the throne, they might be sharing the throne. They could definitely be sharing it. Last four ACC Champions, well, two of them are Florida State, but Duke and NC State had something to say about that in the last handful of years. And Florida State has reigned for so long, though. Duke has something to say about it. Clemson's got something to say about it. Virginia Tech's got something to say about it. More parity than ever, and one of the new top conferences in the NCAA. Emma Jackson's going to step up to the dish in place of Tegan Thrunk. Lefty on righty action with a runner on first. First pitch, taken up and in. And here comes the wind. They pushed back the start time, or pushed up the start time for today. It was supposed to be 2 p.m., but after it rained out yesterday, they looked at the weather and noticed it's probably going to be pretty windy later this afternoon, so made this a noon first pitch. 1-0 pitch, right down the middle for strike one. Hokey fans not thrilled with that call. I'm sure Emma Jackson, Emma Jackson shares their sentiment. But if you're curved, you're right back into this count. One ball, one strike, runner on first. Bree Peck works the walk to start things off. She represents the tying run. Emma Jackson, the pinch hitter, in the 1-1. One -one. Swing and a miss, big hack for strike two. You know, we saw it on the other side of things. Goddard coming in, struggling against Lemley as a pinch hitter. I think the same goes for the Virginia Tech offense. When you're pinch hitting off a player like Cassidy Curd, who has so much movement, and you haven't seen her before, it can be really, really difficult to get in the box and adjust quickly. One runner on. Jackson. Soft flare, left field, tilling towards the track. The wind carrying it in a running grab right in front of the wall as Davidson catches it for out number one. Yeah, Jackson gets handcuffed there, but almost uses her strength to push that ball out of the park. That carried. Yeah, the wind definitely aided that ball, but Curd, to get that first out of the getting so huge. Davidson played that ball really, really well. It's Kylie Aldridge, the left-handed bat, has been a backstop for the Hokies. Mainstay catcher in the lineup for Virginia Tech. What a story she's had as a freshman. First pitch outside. Mentioned it earlier, but yeah, 130 batting average, not fantastic, but head coach Pete DeMore, not afraid to put her in the lineup. Said she's had a lot of loud outs, so that batting average could be a little different. But on top of that, gets on base nearly 37% of the time. That's well above average. Jack Swing called strike. Yeah, a lot of coaches across the country have kind of moved away from looking just at average. They look at on-base percentage, they look at slugging, and a lot of teams are starting to use a quality at bat approach, which can be working the count plus eight pitches. It can be battling after getting into a two-strike count. And I think Aldridge is one of the best in this lineup at creating quality at bats, although you don't see it in the average. 1-1 one, one pitch, big swing and a miss out in front of the screwball. 
And as a freshman, she's going to heat up at any moment. She's really going to – I'm sure she had expectations of having a really good fall to come into the season in that 400. But this game is really difficult. And you, you see it on the Duke side as well. Some of the freshmen with slower starts. But they will come into their own. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, it takes time for a freshman to find the rhythm. Marissa Young said the same thing that Pete Moore said about his leadership with Mackenzie Lauder, who came right back to Blacksburg as a coach this year, about Olivia Watkins and Sydney Romero. It's just good to have people in the staff who are fresh out of the same position their players were in moments ago. 2-2 Two -two fouled off. It, it's different coming from a coach who's done what you've done. So when they're asking you to run sprints or they're asking you to do a certain drill, they've done that drill. They're not just punishing you. They're not making you run just out of pure pleasure. And so for Coach Olivia Watkins, Coach Sidney Romero, they, they just got out of the Pro Bowl. They just, they just finished playing. So there's a lot of respect there from these young Duke players. One down, the 2-2 two -two to Aldridge. Swing and a miss, strike three. Only the second one of the evening, as that's the second out retired here. Yeah, Cassie Kerr just going to climb the ladder, lefty on lefty curveball. Just too much run for Aldridge to catch up. Kerr with the strikeout, the second out of the inning after giving up that first, that first walk. But now we're going to see a pitching change. That'll wrap up Kerr's evening. We'll take a small break here on the ACC Network. A new arm in the circle for the Blue Devils to lead by one. Close one at Tech Softball Park as the Hokies have a one-run deficit against the visiting Duke Blue Devils, and they switch out arms. They go with another left-handed arm in Lily Walker. Yeah, the junior is going to come in. She's going to work a fastball, drop ball, and change up. Really good numbers on the year of 0.44 ERA in 31 innings pitch, 27 strikeouts to only 11 walks. It's a really crafty left-hander that spins it incredibly well. We'll see it. Well, tough part of the order to start off against. The right-handed bat in the leadoff hitter of Emma Ritter, who swings at pitch number one. She'll also inherit a base runner. Yeah, Lily Walker has emerged as sort of this, this reliever, late reliever, closer role. Has done such a wonderful job for this Duke team. The one pitch swung on. Sky high pop up behind home plate, running grab. And she makes the play to retire out number three. Two pitches, one out. Walker comes in to shut down the show. And the Hokies will step back up into the upfield. Then it's ever. April. Yeah. Wow. April 1st, that's right. Yeah, a April Fool's jokes beware. I woke up to a couple of sports-themed April Fool's jokes. <laughs> Beautiful day to kick off a great month of Diamond Sports. First pitch outside to Deja Davis. A lot of April Fool's jokes this morning. Any good ones that you got? Rain? I did not realize it was April 1st, so I was reading Facebook right. and I just got obliterated by four or five. Yeah, it's usually what happens. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Davis. Off-speed catches the outside corner. 1-1 one, one the count. Virginia Tech fans won't empathize with this, but there was a Duke one that was like, they'll pay your tuition if you stay for the entire football game. Wow. <laughs> Students don't tend to do that at Duke. Here, if you don't stay for the entire football game, You're your insane. tuition's revoked. <laughs> yeah, the difference of football cultures is, is noticeable. But I can tell you what, the, the culture of excellence in softball has been quite similar between these two budding programs. What a close one, a one-run one, one lead for the Blue Devils. It was a sack fly in the first by Amina Vega as we have Deja Davis up at the plate here. 2-1 pitch, check swing. On a gold, excuse me. And they're going to call that a hit by pitch. Yeah, Lindley trying to work inside here, but just catches gold right on the forearm as she starts her swing. Doesn't look like they're going to argue that she was attempting to swing. Gold, if you're in the box, you do not have to get out of the way. So she'll take the hit by pitch and pass the bat to the hot Amina Vega. Yeah, that can't feel nice. Here's the big bat of Vega. First pitch, fouled off. So on a gold on first. After the sack fly from Vega, who's up at the dish now, it was a solo shot from Vega. She's brought in both RBIs today. 
Yeah, this is the out you really, really want if you're Virginia Tech. Right around first. Another big swing, high pop up, carrying over to shallow left field. Ritter leathers it for out number one. Massive pitch there by Emma Limley to get the out of Amina Vega. The only player on this Duke team that's really barreled balls consistently well all game long. So to get that first out of the inning is so huge. And making adjustments from year to year is already a motion that Marissa Young's had to go through. First pitch strike to the bat of Claire Davidson, the left fielder. She said from last season, Duke softball has had to replace eight seniors and made two coaching additions as well. A lot of changes were made. The way she described it was, we graduated a lot of home runs from our lineup. But they've also made power in their lineup of consistency. So like Coach Damore, they've kept that power up, even with the graduation of a whole lot of power bats from last year. And they continue to score runs in fewer sing swings when facing talented pitchers like Emma Lemley. They've shown that today. Both teams have a home run. Yeah, I think that just speaks to the program that Coach Marissa Young has built. I mean, so much turnover. So many new faces, but, oh, to, but to have the success. 60 feet gained on the wild pitch, as you were saying, Rain. No, just to have so many new faces and still have that offensive production, I think it just tells you what kind of systems have been put in place by Coach Marissa Young. We'll take a look here on a goal, gonna take advantage of the pass ball and take that extra 60 feet. Gold with a lot of speed, which can be dangerous for this Virginia Tech defense. We'll call that her fourth stolen base of the year. So a runner in scoring position with one out. Good opportunity for the Hokies, to, or the Blue Devils, to try and expand upon a late lead. One, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Lemley finds the hole in the zone for out number two. That's just really good stuff by Emma Lemley. Attacked the zone early in the, in the count. Climbs the ladder a little bit off the plate. Davidson unable to put in and play or spoil it. Limley, another really fantastic pitch in a tough spot. Two down, that's a big way to get out number two. Right down the middle for strike one, it's Kelly Torres, the catcher. 0 for two today, two fly outs to her credit. Nothing like a pitcher's duel. On a noon first pitch in Blacksburg. Swung on, lofted, right center. This one's a no man's land, a running and diving grab. Flashing the leather for out number three. Addie Green shuts down the show. The Hokies will step back up to the dish. They're down by one. Homer's the word of the day as we give you guys our game summary between the Hokies and the Blue Devils. First run to come in, a sack fly from Amina Vega. And she wasn't done just yet in the fourth frame. She flicked one over the center field fence for the second RBI of the evening for the Blue Devils but Jamie Bailey wanted to respond. A big shot to left field, back and forth we go as the Blue Devils lead two to one. Kyle Marshak alongside Rain Wilson. Bit of fun matchup as both pitchers have pitched really well, but one swing can make a difference, Rain. Yeah, it's really been a pitcher's duel with a couple of offensive bright spots in Vega and Jamie Bailey. But now we look to see a new pitcher for Duke. Can Virginia Tech adjust quickly, adjust pitch to pitch, and put a couple runs on the board? Lily Walker came in with two pitches to shut down the last frame. First pitch speeds in low as she faces the left-handed bat. Yeah, Fagan a power hitter, but like she just showed us there, she will move her feet. Sort of a triple threat, can put the ball in front of you, but also a home run power as well. Second to last ups for the Hokies. Here's the 1-0 pitch, it's outside. Hokies thought they could catch a break after Cassidy Curd, but what do they put in? Another left-handed fireballer in the form of Lily Walker. This junior talent has looked solid in the few pitches she's shown so far against a really, really good lineup in the Virginia Tech Hokies. Ground to the right side in foul. Yeah, Walker, although they're both lefties, doesn't throw as hard, will stay in the lower 60s, but still mixes it really, really well. She'll use her changeup in any count. Has a really nice drop ball. Especially to lefties, that drop will kind of move away and sort of look like a drop curve, but what a job by Cassidy Curd. Only giving up one hit to this Virginia Tech offense. 
Fagan 0 for 2 today as she watches an off-speed low. It's ball three. And for folks at home, might be why would you take Cassidy Kurt out? It's very intentional by Coach Marissa Young. Top of the lineup, that would have been their third time seeing Cassidy Kurd. So Coach Marissa Young puts in the lefty, Lily Walker, to hopefully shut this down, down his offense, but also save Cassidy Kurd for the next two games tomorrow. 3-1. Drop ball catches the outside corner, full count. Yeah, Marissa Young, very intentional about how she uses her rotation and was also very transparent about the fact that she just has more depth in her pitching rotation compared to Virginia Tech. Both teams have young rosters, luckily, they have a handful of girls they can call their ace in the Blue Devils. 3-2, soft liner, and a grab by the first baseman. Tapia retires out number one. Yeah, what a job by Lily Walker there. Down in the 3-1 count, throws an off-speed pitch. Fagan tries to delay, but just doesn't get enough on this pitch. Tapia with the play, the first out of the inning. A huge out for this Duke team. Doesn't get any easier in this lineup, though. The power bat of Chavez, the designated player. She's 0 for 2. Check swing. First base umpire will say that she did go. Chuck McManus awards strike one, with one down here in the bottom of the sixth. Strike out and a foul out from Grace Chavez. But we've seen it, especially in the Chattanooga series just a couple weeks ago. One swing makes a difference with her bat as well. She stroked a two-run shot to take the lead late against the Mox in game three of their regular season matchup. And that's the, kind of the theme with his entire offense is at any moment they can fire up. They can, in any moment, they can put a swing on a ball and change a game. 1-1 one, one to Chavez. Soft grounder, left side. Charging is Baker, the throw across the diamond, fired well in time for out number two. Yeah, Walker is not a pitcher that's going to blow it by you. Not a huge strikeout pitcher, but she will make you miss. But Chavez passes the bat to Jamie Bailey, the home run threat. It just doesn't get easy at all. Loud fly out to the second baseman her first time up. Then she made the adjustment. Big home run to left field as she watches strike one in her previous at bat. That's been the only hit of the ball game, the only run of the ball game for Virginia Tech and otherwise very loud offense. But man, pitching has been Definitely the focus between Cassidy Kurd's start for the Blue Devils and Lemley, who's still in the circle for Virginia Tech. A one pitch fouled off. Quickly 0-2 here. As you said, coming in third time against a pitcher, the batters start to make that adjustment. Clearly Bailey did that against Kurd in her second at bat against her. You wonder what the difference looks like here for another left-handed pitcher who's up 0-2. Is that one spoiled? Yeah, it's a completely different look. The natural movement down of Lily Walker. Hard to adjust to after coming off a 70-mile-per-hour thrower, flamethrower and Cassidy Kurd, who works the ball up in the zone. Walker using the changeup there. Bailey, the veteran, spoiling. We'll try the 0-2 again, number 15 from Walker is outside for ball one. And Lily Walker doesn't throw slow. I and mean, she's working in the mid-60s. Commands her pitches really, really well. But coming off a, a player like Cassie Curtis throwing 68, 69, 70 miles per hour, it is an adjustment. One, two proposition is low for ball number two. Count goes even. And you and I were talking about it before the game raid. 10 years ago, mid-60s was unheard of. Now it's almost the regular for pitchers in softball. Yeah, and the same goes for baseball as well. 95 is sort of normal in college baseball. 2-2 Two -two pitch, swing and a miss. That'll retire out number three. Walker comes in to close the show. Hokies still down one as they take the field for the top of the seventh. Blue Devils lead, 2-1. to one. 11th letter of the alphabet is K, and Lemley's got five of them today against a really good offense in the Blue Devils. Kyle Marshak with Rain Wilson, and a 2-1 to one score as Duke leads it. It has been back and forth between these pitchers, but Lemley's still on the show in the circle for the Hokies. Yeah, Emma Lemley has gotten better each and every inning. Six innings pitch, only three hits, one earned, two walks, five strikeouts for the sophomore. You know, early in this game, Duke looked like they had some momentum offensively, but Lindley quickly shut that down, and she's gotten better and better as the innings have progressed, which is not typically what you see. 
Well, one swing can make all the difference, and Vega has done that for the Blue Devils. But here's Jada Baker as she watches strike one here in the top of the seventh. Last stops for Duke to extend upon a one-run lead between two neighbors in the top 25 as the Hokies are tied for 16th and Duke is tied for 13th. Two budding programs who have risen to prominence on the national scale. Pitch number 97 from Lemley. Drops in low, goes to the off-speed there. 1-1 one, one the count in the top of the seventh. Yeah, if you're Duke, you're happy to have the lead, but you certainly are not comfortable with that one-run lead with the Virginia Tech offense swinging the way they are. The 1-1. One, one. Bottom corner called strike two. Lemley has definitely found a rhythm as she closes in on triple digits on the pitch count today. Sets at the hip. One ball, two strike. Here's the proposition from the righty. Simmers in high. Count goes even. And this is a really good sign if you're Virginia Tech. The fact that Limley has kept them off balance better and better as the game has progressed. Because we're going to see her a lot this weekend. We're going to see her tomorrow probably pitch eight or nine innings for this Virginia Tech team. Coach DeMore said from freshman to sophomore year is the 2-2 is a swing and a miss. That's number six on the evening for Lemley. That her maturity is her biggest quality as a young ace pitcher in this Hokies lineup. Yeah, Lindley just gonna work inside here, and the run is too much. She's got too much movement for Baker to catch up and get her barrel out in front of her. Lindley with her sixth strikeout of the day. Really pitching well for this Virginia Tech team. Well, you can't falter the aggression of this lineup. Pop foul on the first pitch. It's the right-handed bat of Francesca Freelich. She had a single and a ground out, one for two today. That was pitch 101 for Lemley. Hey, six strikeouts for Lemley to her credit today, which in all honesty might even be below average for her, which tells you just how good she is in the circle. Here's the 0-1. Catches the bottom corner for strike two. Only one of the Ks she's gotten this evening is backwards. A lot of swings and misses. So you can't be upset about that if you're Marissa Young, the head coach of the Blue Devils. No, not at all, and you're learning. Every single pitch, every single at bat, is a learning lesson for tomorrow for the double header between these two teams. 0-2 to Freelich. Just low, and you can hear the dismay of the Hokie faithful here in Blacksburg. That's just a really good pitch by Lindley and Aldridge, which is a really good frame job. Definitely down, but man, does it look good, especially with the run she has late in the zone. It looks like it's knee height. It is below the knees. That's what makes her so effective. 1-2 to Freelich. Swung on, line to the left side. It's fair down the left field line. Freelich rounding first. She's racing for second. The throw in from Ritter will not be in time. A pop-up slide for a loud one-out double. Here in the seventh, Freelich gets on the board again. Yeah, Lindley's just going to miss over the middle here, and Freelich's going to make her pay. They try to go inside, but misses middle, middle. Freelich shoots it down the line. Out of the reach of Bennett. Emma Ritter gets it in, but not in time to get Freelich at second, who has a double here for the Duke team. Blue Devils aren't done yet, and now they flip to the top of the order. Deja Davis, the designated player, 0 for 2 today. Got on base in her first at bat with a hard hit ground ball that was fumbled by Fagan over at second base. After that, two flyouts. Runner on second, ball skips away, a wild pitch, and another 60 feet awarded. You can't afford to make that mistake as the Blue Devils look to expand upon a one-run lead late in the ballgame. Yeah, both of these teams do a really good job of taking advantage of the 60 feet. There we see Freelick taking that extra 60 feet. Now gives Duke an opportunity to do a lot of things with one out. The squeeze is in play, the safety squeeze. Deja Davis, really good back control, but Limley has so much upspin, it's really difficult to bunt off her. We'll see what Duke tries to do here. But you got to get this run in if you're Duke. you got to find some way to get some insurance going in the bottom seven. You'd imagine just looking to put a ball in the outfield, especially with the speed over on third base. Pretty much anything breaking the infield grass can bring in a big insurance run for Duke. We see Bennett playing up. 1-0 pitch. Swung on and wafted foul. First strike. And 
of course, you want to hit a fly ball in the outfield, but you kind of got to think to find a way on top of this one. Because if you get too far under it, you'll pop up to the infield. They'll waste it out. 1-1, one, one, swung on, lined up the middle. That's a base knock. Another RBI for the Blue Devils. They're up two. Davis finds one to center field. Yeah, Deja Davis, the veteran on this team, adjusts pitch to pitch really, really well. Finds a pitch up in the zone and smacks it up to center field. Francesca Freelich will score and gives this Duke team just a little bit of insurance. Their fifth hit of the day. A massive run in this game for Deja Davis and this Duke team. And maybe, just maybe, you're finally seeing a little bit of the workload showing in the sophomore pitcher of Emma Lemley, as that was pitch 107. And the first knock of the evening for Deja Davis, she faces Cameron Jackson, who steps up to the dish. So it was Goddard who pinched hit for Deanna Jennings, who had two Ks before she stepped out of the ball game. And now we have Jennings. And they replace the runner over at first base. We'll see who that is in just a moment. One down, runner on third, swing and a miss for strike one. Kelsey Zampa is going to be over on first base after the base knock from Deja Davis. Another insurance run with one down. 180 feet away from scoring. 0-1, skips in low. Jackson, a senior, three-year starter for this team, has battled a lot of injuries but a really big bat in this Duke lineup. Hasn't had as many opportunities this year, like I mentioned, battling some injuries. 1-1, one, one, framed on the outside corner. But if you're Coach Marissa Young, you're putting her in this spot so she can hit a double and hopefully score the pinch runner Zampa. Jennings is there, she's likely gonna move station to station. Showing bunt, sets the bat high, the 1-2 outside. And you'll see Cameron Jackson show bunt, but all that is is really a timing swing for her to keep her swing short, especially in two-strike approach against Limley. You see how she has it at the top of the zone. Almost cocking back the barrel in her swing, the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on, lined well, deep right field, running over towards the foul line, diving, and the ball pops loose. That's going to be a base hit. The wind really caught that one as it died in the right field, and Green could not make the play. Yeah, it sounded like Jackson got a really good piece of that. And Kyle, we talked about it, the wind playing a factor at some point in this game. Jackson gets a good piece up in the zone. Green tries to play it, but the wind just takes it in. Zampa doesn't know whether to tag on the dive, but sees the ball down, takes advantage of the next 60 feet. And Duke with a little bit more momentum. But a tough pill to swallow if you're Emma Limley, because that was a really well-executed pitch. Now you have a hokey meetup in the circle. Lemley getting support from her teammates. What do you imagine they're talking about is apparently the uh, Duke lineup started to make adjustments with six hits on the board now. I think they're just reminding her, hey, you're good. Your best is better. We believe we're going to go back and we're going to score a couple of runs. We're going to win this game. Keep doing what you're doing. You cannot control that. Three consecutive hits for the Blue Devils. Two runners on. And the one out pitch, that one fouled off. So it's been a pitcher's duel all day. Lemley coming up on pitch 114. And as of right now, Coach Pete DeMoor is going to stick with the sophomore arm. Giselle Tapia, righty on lefty. And the offer skips in low. Oh boy, the gusts of wind is taking over. And that's why they pushed this game up to noon, right? They were afraid the wind was going to come in on that cold front here in Blacksburg. Right around now. So the weather win, uh, was pretty accurate on that one. Blowing straight out to left field today. Swung on, high chopper up the middle. Flip to second, will not be in time. It's gonna be a fielder's choice. All runners are safe. Yeah, Tapia making the adjustment from previous bass. Just chops this one to the ground. Tegan Thrunk doesn't have enough time to get out of her glove. Cameron Jackson, enough speed over there. 
to get to second, and now we will see the conference from Virginia Tech. Well, the bases are juiced. This might be the moment where Lamley exits the ball game. What a job she's done against one of the best lineups in the ACC. Right now, just a conversation. They'll probably keep her in. Again, kind of shorthanded in the bullpen. And I think if you're Virginia Tech, you, you got to think, too, you're down. Why give Duke another look? Why give them a look that they likely will see tomorrow? And also, it's not like Lemley is leaving the ball over the middle of the plate. Duke is kind of just hitting it where they aren't. Nobody in the bullpen for Virginia Tech right now. I think you got to stick with Lemley. She's pitching really well. I think Duke, in a way, is kind of getting lucky right now with the elements. Right. I mean, the conversation with coaches usually is, is the pitcher not doing well or is the team just hitting? And clearly the Blue Devils are just hitting, so they're going to make the adjustments in pitch sequencing. What do you think they can do to find the hole in the zone here? I think Lemley continues to attack the way she's been attacking. I think she's pitched really well. I think Duke has made a lot of really good adjustments getting on top of the ball. But at the same time, you know, Lemley is still hitting the zone, commanding her pitches incredibly well. On a gold, bases loaded. First pitch taken outside for ball one. 0 for 1 today. Got on base twice, though. A walk and a hit by pitch with a strikeout in between. Blue Devils up two in the top of the seventh. The 1 0 pitch. Framed outside for ball two. How about the energy late in this ball game? Lemley, the star of this ball game for the Hokies. The clear cut ace of a young but talented Virginia Tech squad, but the Blue Devils have stifled the right-hander. 2-0 delivery. Swung on, that's a high pop-up to left field. Ritter going back, she can only watch. Grand slam. Blue Devils continue to hammer, and they extend it by four. They've cracked this game wide open, 7-1 here in the seventh. We talked about her in the pregame. On a goal, 10 home runs on the year. Make it 11. Lemley leaves this pitch over the middle. And on a goal, makes her pay. Really balanced swing. Uses the win to her advantage. Gets that ball up in the jet stream. And gives her team four more runs and some insurance against this Virginia Tech team. The power's been unrivaled from both squads. There's another flare to the left side and foul. Well, the Blue Devils have taken the clear-cut advantage in this one. It was just a couple of knocks that reigned in before that. But when you get a grand slam, man, that really changes the feel of the ball game. Now it's a six-run advantage. Well, the bases are cleared. You think Lemley's starting to calm down, maybe try and reset here after a bad pitch? I think so. I think you just got to throw strikes, get your team in the dugout, give yourselves a chance. 1-1 delivery. Check swing foul. It's tough, though, because you look at that fly ball to right. I'm sure Addie Green wants that one back. The wind definitely played a factor. It, it counts as a hit. But then you look at the ground ball up the middle, Tegan Thrunk unable to get it out of her glove. If those two out plays are made, they're out of the inning. They don't, on a goal, doesn't hit that grand slam. Here's the one, two. Ground ball right back to Lemley. She'll retire out number two. Well, that's not indicative of it, but right before, a whole lot of knocks have rained in for the Blue Devils who have cracked this game wide open. They've spread the ball all over the ballpark, Rain. Yeah, what point? What sticks out to me is the three for six with runners in scoring position. Anytime you can bat 500 with runners in scoring position, especially off a pitcher like Limley, you're doing something right, and that's something they've struggled with early on in the year. So I'm sure Coach Mercy Young is very proud of that number. Two down. Skips in low. It's Claire Davidson, the left fielder. A two-way talent that's taken over the ACC as well. Hasn't been able to get the bat going against Lemley yet. Maybe she's due as well. 1-0. Fouled off. You know, if you erase this inning, of course, that can't happen. But I think that's what you have to do if you're Virginia Tech moving on into tomorrow. A doubleheader, a new day. You erase the seventh inning, and you have a really, really close ball game. The offense needs to find a way. But... I think the scoreboard doesn't reflect the type of game that we've seen today. 1-1 one, one with two down. Outside. Two balls, one strike, two down. Lemley given the rest of this game regardless. Uncharacteristic outing for 
an otherwise excellent sophomore right-hander for Virginia Tech. Fastball fouled off again. What do you think went wrong? The Devils made the adjustment. What was it from Lemley that gave up so many runs in an outing that you don't really see very often from such a sensation in the ACC? I think you tip your cap to the Duke offense. I think they made adjustments when they had to, and they capitalized on the, not I don't want to say errors, but the mistakes of this Virginia Tech team, that fly ball to right, the ball hit up the middle, and then you have to face on a gold, who at any point can hit the ball out of the park. Gloved over and put down on the bag. That'll retire the side, but not without some damage done. Get out the rye bread and the mustard. It's a grand salami for Anna Gold, who strokes one to left field. Duke on top by six in Blacksburg. It wasn't seven to one year lead as five pour in for the Blue Devils in the previous half inning. And it's last stops for the Hokies on a beautiful afternoon at Tech Softball Park. Welcome back to the New River Valley. On a noon first pitch, it's Kyle Marshak with Rain Wilson as we enter the last half inning of play possibly for the Hokies. We're going to start with Addie Green, the right fielder. Lefty on lefty. And only 18 pitches in for Lily Walker, who took over a couple innings ago. First pitch is in the zone in the outside corner. Yeah, Walker with some insurance here. Just got to fill up the zone, throw strikes, let your defense work behind you. A one pitch, check swing, pop foul. One run today, the Hokies really just with an uncharacteristic performance regardless. You don't see Lemley give up this many runs and you don't see a full game out of the Hokies where when they enter the last half inning, they only have one hit to their credit. But guess what? Of course that one hit was a home run. Next pitch, grounded to the left side, threw across the diamond, one hop, just in time to get her throughout number one as Baker retires the first. Really nice play by the freshman, Baker, to get the first out of this inning, to stop the chance of any early rally for this Virginia Tech team. A nice job by Lily Walker to fill up the zone. Bennett will step up to the dish. She's 0 for 2 today. Flolly floater for the get me over, strike one. Six run lead for the Blue Devils who come back late in the game to extend upon a lead they've maintained the entire ball game. It was as close as one. Next pitch, swing and a miss, 0-2. Oh, oh, 2 quickly here, Walker trying to make quick work in the final ups for Virginia Tech, 0-2. Oh, Skips in low. And you have to imagine this game looks really good grand scale. You know, it's mid-season in the ACC reign, but for these two teams who are both awfully close to each other, not just in the top 25, but in the ACC standings, that one simmers in inside. That's got to be giving a lot of confidence to Marissa Young. This is her first visit to Blacksburg since 2018. Yeah, difficult place to play. Virginia Tech fans show up and they show out. Hokies are really loud, so anytime, anytime you can win on the road, especially in an environment like this, it's got to give you a lot of confidence. Definitely helps your RPI. Really big road victory for this new team if they can finish it out. Count goes full. Eddie Green or Kelsey Bennett, that is, will have something to say about that. Trying to stretch the final chance for the Hokies who are down six. Here's the pitch from Walker. Swung on, chopped to the left side, and spoiled foul. And if you're Virginia Tech, you're just trying to see pitches. You're just trying to pass the bat, gather information for the rest of the series, because although it looks like game one is out of reach for the Hokies, the series is not. If you take two tomorrow, you take in the series, you forget about this game. One down, the full count offering from Walker. Swing and a miss, pops away, they're going to call it a foul ball. You have to imagine Pete DeMore trying to think of takeaways for how he can adjust to the excellent pitching 
for tomorrow as they have a doubleheader. Full count with one down. Inside for ball four. Hokies aren't done just yet, but if they walk away with a loss today, they still get two more tomorrow. First game got rained out yesterday afternoon. So we have two to watch. Noon, first pitch, and then 2.30 right after. It's going to be a long day at Tech Softball Park tomorrow, Rain. Yeah, it's going to be a long day, but a really fun day. First game on ACC Network. Second one on ACC Network Extra. And Virginia Tech, they're so well coached, they're going to come back with a lot of adjustments tomorrow. It'll be fun to see exactly how deep this roster is on a young team for Virginia Tech. They're going to go to grind tomorrow, likely, as Bree Peck steps up to the dish. 0 for 1. That one outside. Coming up on pitch 30 for Walker. We're switching out runners as Pearson takes over at first base. Bennett out of the ball game. Next pitch is low. Hokie's not done yet, though. The plate discipline continues to drive up the pitch count late in a game where they're down by six. No give up on this Hokie squad ring. No, not at all. Every single pitch they battle really, really well. Really fun team to watch. 2-0 proposition right down the middle for strike one. And although they, they haven't, you know, we looking at the scoreboard, one hit on the day, not their best offensive day, Kyle, but they've really worked counts really, really well. They've worked deep into counts. They've spoiled pitches. They just haven't been able to barrel pitches up as much as they might like. I, I think you go back to the drawing board with a little tweaks, a little adjustments, but I think tomorrow they'll come back an entirely new team. Another ball fouled off as Pete DeMore soccers it back in his direction. 2-2 Two -two the count, runner on first. The Hokies will likely move to 8-2 and two in the ACC. Duke was half a game back on Louisville for that fourth spot in the standings. They'll push themselves back in that to, at, into that position. Swung on and fouled off again. Virginia Tech having a hard time recognizing the off-speed out of the hand of Walker. It's just a really nasty pitch by Lily Walker, but... You can see it in their swings. They're leaned over. They're having a hard time delaying into their legs and getting a good swing off. It's a pitch they will see all weekend long if we see Lily Walker tomorrow. One down, fouled off again. That one at 63. Walker sitting in the mid-60s, but still velocity worth trying to catch up to. Curd was sitting in the high 60s when she was out there. And what makes Lily Walker's fastball really difficult to catch up to is the fact that out of the hand, her changeup looks the same. And so you have to kind of prepare your body for both, which makes you late on the fastball. Run around for the Hokies, inside corner, called ball three. Count runs full for the second consecutive at bat. Well, this ball game is winding down, but the weather Still picking right up. It is gusting out to left field right now in a windy afternoon in Blacksburg. The full count pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Out number two, and the Blue Devils are one away from securing a big number one victory in a three-game series with the Hokies. Yeah, Lily Walker staying with a changeup. I mean, just out of the hand, a nasty pitch with break on it. Bree Peck unable to delay and put a good swing on it. Again, not the result for Virginia Tech, but another really solid at bat in terms of working the count, working deep in the count, giving yourself a chance. Will get me over for strike number one. 300, the batting average for Tegan Thrunk, looking to make a difference late in this game. Hokies in takeaway mode. What can they do to improve in their final at bats in a game that just slipped out of their grit? A five run. Seventh inning for the Blue Devils just moments ago. Two outs, a one the count, and the pitch to Thrunk. Taken for ball one. Yeah, Virginia Tech can just scratch off one run here with two outs. Just gives you a little bit more momentum, go momentum going into game two and three tomorrow. The one one delivery, foul back. 
Again, noon and then 2.30 first pitch for the doubleheader against the Blue Devils to finish off this three-game slate in the ACC. DeMore will likely take this series with a grain of salt. He has a young team, and there's so much parity in the ACC as well. The one-two pitch fouled off. Hokies down to their final out. One ball, two strikes, one runner on. The pitch, swung on, grounded to the left side, picked out, throw across the diamond is in time, flashing the leather as gold to retire the ball game. A five spot for the Blue Devils, and they take it by six. Seven to one, your score. Blue Devils move on to 27 and six. The Hokies, 27 and seven. Kyle Marshak alongside Rain Wilson. Rain, your final thoughts in a game that just slipped out of the grip of the Hokies late. Yeah, Duke pitched really, really well, only giving up that one hit through seven. And then they hit when they had to. They hit when they had opportunities, especially in the seventh inning with the on a gold grand slam. Just put it out of reach for the Virginia Tech team. Absolutely. Well, it was a pitcher's duel until it wasn't. A fun ball game as the Blue Devils take game one in a three-game slate. So, for one final time, 7-1 to your score as Duke takes game one. For my analyst, Rain Wilson, I'm Kyle Marshak saying so long from Tech Softball Park, where the final score is 7 1. To watch this entire game on replay, as other games in the ACC network, download the ESPN app.